So, you might be wondering, what even is ichnotaxon and ootaxon? It's not a common word at all, even among biologists. I tried searching for a video on YouTube, but I can't find any. Well, except for the videos on pronunciation and dictionary meaning, I guess. So, I'll just make a video myself. And so, let me raise the question. What exactly is ignotaxon and ootaxon? So, let's talk about ignotaxon first. Igno means track or trace. So, ignotaxon means a taxon based on a trace of an organism. More specifically, a taxon based on a trace fossil. What's a trace fossil, you might ask? Well, it's any fossilized trace of an organism. For animal, examples are tracks or footprints, burrows, and even coprolites, which are fossilized feces, aka dung fossil. Quite simple, isn't it? In concept, yes. Practically, in junction to the mainline systematics and taxonomy, it's actually quite a problem. You see, right now you could step on a mud, and you can see your footprint. You could do so to other animals too. You could even identify what animal track came from without seeing the actual animal stepping on the ground. That's an old technique practiced by humans, especially hunters. That's all because we can see the shape of their foot, and we could just compare it with the tracks. Or, we can simply observe the process of the track creation. Hence, we know what animal it came from. But the thing is, we can't exactly do that with extinct animals. We don't even exactly know their food shape, for the majority of them at least. And so, it's not an easy task to identify which animal a fossilized track came from. And, this is just about tracks. If you remember, I told you trace fossils is not just about tracks. Imagine identifying which animal fossilized feces came from. And so, this is why ichnotaxonomy is studied. Oh, by the way, it's the studies of the taxonomy of ichnotaxon. It's part of ichnology, which is the study of trace fossils. Oh, and since most of the time we will never be sure of what animal correspond to which trace, ichnotaxon are mostly not correlated to the taxon in mainline taxonomy, which means it's a parataxonomy, which is why it's not really a popular subject. But still, it's regulated by the ICZN. But it doesn't share the principle of priority, which means, even if it's proven that an ichnotaxon corresponding with an animal is described earlier than the animal itself, that animal don't have to use the ichnotaxon name. If you would like to know more about the rules of priority, I suggest checking out my video on scientific names. Anyway, let me show you some examples of ichnotaxon. You could find a paper discussing the discovery of an ignotaxon for the bioerosion by fermented anchoring from 2022. This was classified as the ignogenus Renignus. If you are wondering what you are looking at, it's basically a rock that is eroded by organism activity, which is what bioerosion is. This one was caused by fermented, which is an animal called worm snail. They don't really move like other snails. Instead, they anchor themselves to a rock or other solid substrate. That anchoring caused these marks. Another example is the discovery of a theropod tracks in China, published in 2021. The tracks were identified as a new Ichno species, named Eubrontes nobitai. It was named after Nobita, from Doraemon. Why you ask? Well, because apparently, in one of the movies, Nobita's dream is to have a dinosaur named after him. So, in a way, the scientists were making his wish came true. What a nice bunch of people, aren't they? Oh, by the way, Eubrontes is actually not a new genus. I mean, not a new ichnogenus. It's quite a known ichnogenus. Several tracks identified as ichnogenus Eubrontes had been found from Europe to the mainland Asia and even in Australia. When it was first discovered, it was thought to be a footprint from a big bird, but it is now believed to be from a small theropod. Well, I mean, a non-avian theropod, like Sulophysis, or perhaps Dilophosaurus.
Alright, let's move on to O taxon. As you might already guess, O means egg. So, O taxon is a taxon based on an egg, especially fossilized egg. The study of fossilized egg classification itself is called Veterovata. Just like Ignotaxonomy, it's also a parataxonomy. This time, unlike in Ignotaxon, Ovotaxon is not even stated in the ICZN. Well, at least as far as I know, do correct me if I'm wrong. Scientists usually just name them like how Ignotaxon is named. So, you are most likely familiar with chicken egg, right? But because you are so familiar with it, you might not notice that eggs in the animal kingdoms have varieties of colors, shapes, sizes, and even structures. Colors tend to not show in fossilized remains, so for Vetrovata, colors are not really a dependable character for identification. So, we move on to shape. Not all eggs are ovals, which might sound weird because oval itself means shaped like an egg, right? Some eggs are round, such as owl egg, but most eggs are indeed oval though. But the thing is, for fossilized remain, most of the time we would not find a complete shell. So, sometimes shape is quite difficult to determine. Same with size. Incomplete shell might make it difficult to determine the size. And so, we move on to the defining characters, the shell structure. Publication as early as 1996 had made a chart of fossilized egg structures. This chart is commonly used to identify egg fossils until now. Some eggs have distinct structure, which is almost unmissable even by an amateur eye, such as these tuberculate nodes from this fossil. From the same paper, you could see the example of how one compared the egg fossils to identify one another. From the one is obvious as the node morphology, to the subtler one such as pore canals and layer proportion. Technology really does help these studies. The use of CT scan and 3D rendering enables scientists to be able to better identify and characterize trace fossils and egg fossils. For example, look at this detailed scan of the bioerosion traces. In this one belemnite fossil, there are a lot of traces, possibly from different ichnospecies. This research had identified at least 9 ichnotaxa, just from the singular small belemnite. Imagine that. And so, there you go. There are other sites you might never heard about in taxonomy. I assure you, it's completely normal to never even heard of it before, since many of my biologist colleagues had never heard of it too. So, imagine how many more things you might never heard of. How much are there to learn? Some might even become your interest one day. For now, just learn bit by bit. And that's all for now. Oh, 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 oh,